We have uh, many examples. In fact, we have been held, holding the Earth Dialogues in, from Lyon to uh, uh, we were in New York, in, uh, in Barcelona, in Brisbane, in Australia, in, um, in Belo Horizonte, in, in Brazil. And all of them uh, entail a, um, a close partnership with the local government and a final blueprint declaration at the end of these uh, meetings, these large important uh, meetings, with very specific actions so that the whole of the global experience is uh, then put to use in a local context. Um, I can also uh, mention the example of New Orleans in Louisiana in the United States, where through the collaboration with the local authorities, in fact, we held our uh, general assembly there in, uh, in uh, New Orleans because of the, of the meaning it had to reconstruct the city in a sustainable way with green buildings, with a green city, um, and, and with deep studies, studies in depth, which uh, reflected the needs, the local needs, but taking into account the global expertise. In, uh, in New Orleans, we are still uh, building new houses, green buildings, and uh, our, our affiliate in the United States, Global Green, is in fact very active and has many different experts who meet regularly, advise and propose uh, governments, especially municipal and, and local authorities, so as to uh, avoid further uh, problems in the future. We also have in Australia several examples of uh, cooperation with local governments from Brisbane where we uh, founded our, in, in uh, 2006, the local organization Green Cross Australia. In Barcelona itself, where I come from in Spain, uh, we had very close collaboration with, uh, with the local government, with the municipality with uh, long-lasting uh, consequences which are then being shared and they are, uh, of course, the benefit of these global meetings. Uh, you know, negotiating with the government, negotiating with the large uh, corporations, the business world, is always, um, is always difficult because, of course, there are diverging interests and uh, the civil society always has some demands which are not met or are partially met by the, the, um, the business community or the local government. So these negotiations, uh, as we understand them, have to be approached from a very positive, open uh, frame of mind with, a, with an open attitude. And uh, in fact, uh, the, the difficult part is to convince, for example, the business community that whatever measures are uh, to be taken, for example, to avoid throwing uh, waste uh, to, to the river like it happened here and, and you know the circumstances of these electroplating, illegal electroplating industries was very tough. In, in other uh, areas of the world we find also difficult to convince the, uh, the industry that it is in their own benefit as well because uh, businesses look very much at benefit, at profit, but at very short term. Sometimes you have to look a little bit ahead of the short term to understand that the benefit will be much greater and will also include the other members of the community, not just the business community. And the same happens with the government. Usually governments have only um, an outlook to, to the next election. I mean, and they try to implement policies which are going to be beneficial for the next, uh, um, the, ne the opinion of the next voters so that they vote in their favor. But uh, you have to convince politicians that we are not working for their own individual benefit. We are working for the benefit of the community and this in return will benefit them politically because people understand civil society is sensitive enough and that's why we also want to develop this environmental awareness among the constituencies so that they know who to vote. They know who is the right candidate 
even if the results, if the benefits of those policies are not before the next election, you know, even if they are after.